So thank you for joining us, Dipanshu. Thank you, Fiona. It's always a pleasure coming back to an academy. You know, uh, being associated from such a long time, uh, so much of love and warmth from the aspirants and from the team as well. So always, you know, feel really good when I come back to an academy. That's really great. And uh, we do know, Dipanshu, that you yourself have attempted this UPSC exam quite a number of times. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> So, based on that, we have a surprise test for you today at an academy. Really? I thought it was just a you know, formal conversation. I'm not prepared for a test, but let's see. Well, I'm sure you'll do really good at it. And I'm sure that, you know, all our aspirants, especially the ones who are giving it for the first time, would really love to see, like, how an expert would actually approach the paper. How would he think about the questions? How would he answer the questions? So, you up for the challenge? Well, I'll try my best. <laughs> Perfect. So we have the question paper here set for you by an academy. So we will be giving you two hours to solve this paper. Okay. And we have our team who will scrutinize your answers and we shall get the answer results today itself. Okay. Ready? So a little jittery still, you know, like giving it, <laughs> I have given it multiple times, but mm -hmm. the hands are still sweaty. Perfect. Okay. I'll here try. you go. Thank you. All the best. Okay. The seal, you know, the seal, the red seal has to be opened. Okay. Oh, we, we even have a OMR sheet. Exactly. As I told you, it's as real as the prelims paper. Before you check the questions, just a very quick question, Dipanshu. Uh, you know, there are a lot of aspirants who might be appearing for the very first time right. for the prelims. So, is there like a checklist that you could mention that they should keep in mind for the paper? Yes, I mean, uh, what happens, uh, you know, many times I've noticed it in my personal experience as well, like I've given multiple attempts. Uh, what happens is that generally, uh, when we have the OMR sheet, some candidates have this habit of generally marking the and bubbling the OMR sheet in the end. So that basically adds on to the nervousness of the examination because you're already very nervous uh, whether the questions are correct or not and how many you're getting and you have the added burden of the, uh, you know, clearing the uh, cutoff list. So during that time, what you ha what happens basically, even if you have got the uh, answer correctly, but sometimes it happens that you mark the wrong bubble. So ultimately, you cannot erase it because it's in like you know uh, your pen, and it cannot be erased because eraser is not allowed in the examination. So you know, so my advice would be to uh, attempt at, at least ten to fifteen questions, and then you know bubble it at the same time. So at least you're also very sure that you're not going to re, re see that question or you know repeat over all that again. So that's one particular advice. But also there can be one other strategy that some people also follow is that uh, if they are confident enough of uh, you know finishing the paper within half, uh, one and a half hours, so for last 30 minutes they can utilize the time in bubbling the OMRs. But I, I guess 30 minutes is pretty less for bubbling 100 OMRs also. Uh, so my particular advice is that bubble the OMRs after like 15 to 20 questions when you have attempted. Perfect. So go ahead. Let's see the question. Okay, so OMRs. We'll fill that later on. Let me just go through the question actually. So Dipanchu, what are you thinking? How do you think the paper is? Well, I can recognize some of the options. So uh, it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, but one particular thing that I generally do when I were attempt the paper is, uh, because if you're a sincere candidate, what you basically know is, that if you have prepared well for like one year, one and a half year, and the first thing you should actually do is always check the paper, what is the standard of the paper. Because, you know, even after you're prepared, like if you're honest with your preparation, and if you find the paper to be a little difficult, that means it's difficult for everybody else also. So then you can decide probably what are the number of questions that you're going to attempt out of 100. But if you're not sincere with the preparation, I mean, any paper can be difficult for you. Mm -hmm. So that is the thing. So generally, uh, the first thing that I actually do, and I what also advise to other aspirants, and I've seen, uh, you know, the, this thing is common with most of the aspirants who have created this examination, that they'll first quickly go through the paper because a lot of time what happens is because we have different, different booklet series. So it might be a case that my booklet have all the difficult questions on the first, the first 10 questions are the most difficult ones. So probably I can get nervous and, you know, uh, I can forget the questions that I even know about. So the best idea is to quickly skim through the paper and get an idea that at the feel of the paper, uh, you know, how what is the standard of the paper. Mm -hmm. So that will basically help you in, you know, picking the questions and trying to solve it. Because you have to only clear the prelims and you have to clear the cutoff, you, you know, because the marks are not going to be added in the final list. So you just need to clear that barrier. So, you, you, we not, you know, we there's no need to take this paper on your ego that you'll have to solve <laughs> question number 1 to 10 and then, you know, 10 to 20 onwards. 
So that is the case. Perfect. So that means the difficulty of the paper would determine the attempt. Right. Yes. Perfect. So I, I think I should start with the paper now and uh, let me see how I do it. You know how how fine. So how well I'm prepared for this paper. Perfect. All right. So, so I'm checking your time. Okay. And you can definitely start with the paper. Okay. And uh, we will definitely be stopping you midway sometimes. Uh, when we just want to know a bit more about how are you approaching the paper, how are you reaching at that answer. Right. Uh, also, you know, we really want to tell you which are some of the tricky questions okay. and how should someone attempt those. Cool. Perfect. Perfect. All Let's right. start, Ben Dipanchu. Okay, so uh, first thing I want to just do is like at least fill my name with the OMR. We'll, we'll go with the bubbling thing in the later part. So this is very important, you know, like uh, if you're not careful with your roll number at least, so it will be a, a sheer waste of your, you know, preparation that you have marked all the questions corrected, but your roll number is, you know, something which is wrong. So, you know, ultimately it's, it's a complete waste. So be very careful whenever you are, you know, marking your uh, bubbles, especially for your roll number part. And be very thorough with your, you know, these things about your details, your roll number, uh, your, uh, you know, test ID, because this is very important, because ultimately your candidature can be rejected if you have, you know, marked it wrongly, even if you have, you know, done the paper very fine. So mm -hmm. that is very important. So that means even though the nervousness starts to set in, you need to be really calm yeah. during the paper and at yeah. the start make sure you don't make silly mistakes like yeah, this. Yeah, especially you know with your credentials. I mean you cannot come, you know, you cannot afford a mistake by bubbling a wrong OMR, especially for your roll number. Mm -hmm. So that is very important. True. So yeah, let's see <laughs> how do I do with this paper. All right, wish me all the best. <laughs> all the best, can't you? I've Thank been telling you, you all along <laughs> and I'm sure you're gonna do a really good job. Okay, let's see. So. Here it goes. Question number one: Indian State Forest is released by. Uh, this is this one is easy. You know, this is easy. Ministry of Environment and Forest, definitely. So you know, Indian State of Forest report. So that's the main ministry which is handling these kind of things. So definitely Ministry of Environment and Forest. Then the next is on international issues. So Israel. Okay, Prime Minister Modi visited Israel. So that is why probably uh, this question is in the paper. Uh, okay, so Israel is a riparian state of which of the following water bodies? Uh, Mediterranean Sea is definitely there. Uh, even Dead Sea is there. Uh, Adriatic Sea is not near Israel. Definitely, it's not in, near Israel. So I can completely eliminate D. Uh, one and two, and definitely, I'm very sure is is the correct. Sea of Galilee. Sea of Galilee is actually Israel uh, and Syria share the Sea of Galilee. Uh, so I'm going this by this option and option number B one two three, because it's talking about riparian state. So it gets water from that uh, from that uh, water body. Yes. So Mediterranean Sea, Dead Sea, and Sea of Galilee. Definitely B one two three. So this is actually one of the trickiest questions that I want specially to focus on. So a lot of people might be aware about Mediterranean Sea and they must be also knowing about Dead Sea because Dead Sea was in news because of Jordan, because Jordan shares uh, waters of Dead Sea and uh, Mediterranean Sea because UPSC has this very, you know, uh, habit of uh, asking a lot of questions from Middle East. Mm -hmm. So Middle East geography questions are very, very important. So probably this question, you know, your team has also included uh, considering the fact that, you know, uh, this area was particularly important. So the Sea of Galilee, I, you know, because I read it somewhere also and uh, I keep on checking the maps. Uh, so Sea of Galilee actually lies in the border of, uh, it's actually been divided uh, between uh, Israel and Syria. So definitely, it, you know, one, two, three is the answer for this one. So you have to be, you know, connect the dots and you have to that mental, you know, frame of mind of the maps where the location is. So probably then only you can answer these, these type of questions. So next is environment performance index. Achha, environment uh, uh, is important to uh, That environment is one of the most important areas for prelims examination, particularly from past two, three years. Mm -hmm. The fact for that is because uh, now prelims examination contains uh, questions from uh, for specifically for your uh, forest services. So for forest services, environment is very, very important. So that is why UPSC has included, especially after 2014, uh, questions from environment. So a lot of questions are on environment. So environment is also one of the areas where you can actually score really good. But at the same time, if you're not uh, you know, careful, you can actually end up scoring very low also. So you need to be very wary about uh, environment. So the environment performance index is prepared by two major universities in association with. So about this particular question, I think, um, because uh, I was scrolling through Facebook one day and I saw something from World Economic Forum because the World Economic Forum keeps on uh, giving details about uh, climate change and a lot of things that are happening related to climate change. Mm -hmm. So I think that this performance index is because World Bank is nowhere associated with it and even UNICEF does not have such a major partnership in terms of uh, 
uh, you know, with the environmental performance index. IPCC, I'm a little doubtful, but uh, as far as my knowledge is concerned, I have never come across uh, IPCC uh, to be associated with EPI. So I am going with uh, uh, World Economic Forum. So this is the answer. Then uh, several reports can be highlight the unprecedented breaching. So this is again a question from your classic environment and geography. So this is about coral breaching uh, rate of the Great Barrier Reef. Now, why this question was asked probably in this paper is uh, because of the fact that uh, there are a lot of you know incidents and uh, happening because of El Nino. So El Nino is basically a situation where uh, the water gets really warm and it affects the uh, coral and marine organisms. So that bleaching is taking place. So probably this Great Barrier Reef because of a lot of environmental issues and a lot of uh, uh, man-made causes and pollution is getting depleted. So the question is asking which of the following factors could be possible behind coral bleaching. So change in water temperature is definitely there because they cannot survive uh, below a certain degree of temperature and if, if also the water is warmer than 27 degrees or probably warmer than 25 degrees it becomes very very difficult for the corals to survive. So they start bleaching. Uh, so first is correct pollution is also uh, a factor for it and even increased acid acidification. So if the mineral content of the water changes they are very sensitive to it. So probably all of the options of this, this particular question is correct. So even this is correct and this is correct and even this is correct. So D, all of the above are for this one. Perfect. So as you're saying this, uh, the punch, what I do understand is you are referring a lot of times that it was in current news. Right. So this really shows that current affairs, current news plays a very important role. Yes, definitely. Because uh, what happens basically is UPSC, you know, wants candidates to be well aware of whatever is happening around and link that, you know, issues which are happening around the world with whatever you have read from the static portion. Mm -hmm. So even though it's a classic question of environment, like basic question of environment, but you also have to link it because Great Barrier Reef was in use because of the warming of waters due to El Nino. So what is coral bleaching is basically a static part, but which part of the world is facing coral bleaching is that you need to be aware of. Perfect. Because different areas might have different possible causes. So like uh, probably coral bleaching in Arabian Sea or Bay of Bengal you know, might not be uh, the case that they are happening because of, because of the same reason for what is happening in the Great Barrier Reef of Australia. Because uh, you know, Great Barrier Reef is very famous for its tourism also. So a lot of anthropogenic causes, you know, man-made causes and due to tourism pressures and pollution is one of the biggest factors for coral bleaching and you know, corals getting affected around Australia. So I'm just trying to link the topics, you know, to approach the answers, you know. Perfect. So, so that's like the best approach to yeah, keep I mean, linking yeah, topics. Yeah, you have to like do a self-talk in the examination. Now you have to approach the question that, you know, you're talking to yourself because you're trying to talk to your brain that, okay, I've read this and I'm pretty confident about this, that this is pretty much correct. But at the same time, you need to be very and careful that, uh, you know, whether it was you know, a total bluff also. So you need to keep talking to yourself during the examination. So we'll see the next question. So this is about uh, defense. So this is about Agni missiles. So recently Agni 6. So as far as I know, I haven't heard about Agni 6. That the latest that the one that I've heard is Agni 5. So the, since this question is asking about the correct statement, uh, one is automatically ruled out because Agni 5 is the one which can travel al almost uh, to 10,000 kilometers. I've never come across any missile that has been developed by India which crosses 10,000 kilometer barrier because if it crosses 5,000 to 10,000 kilometer barrier, it's in the category of ICBM. And as far as I'm concerned, ICBM, uh, uh, only US, Russia and China and India after Agni-5 have the ICBM. No other country has it. So for ICBM, it's between 5,000 and 10,000. So first, op first option is definitely incorrect. And uh, Agni missile is a family of medium uh, to intercontinental, uh, you know, range uh, tactical missiles. So it depends, you know, uh, Agni missile, it depends. So if it's like beyond a cert certain kilometer range, then it will be an intercontinental uh, ballistic missile. And it also it is why this particular question is wrong or this uh, statement is wrong because Agni is a, a ballistic missile, it is not a, a tactical missile. So my hunch says that both of the options are it's, it's actually not a hunch, it's like the most logical answer to this question. Uh, so all, all, all of both of the options are incorrect for this. So fifth is D definitely. Uh, next is Iran. So Iran is anyway in news uh, because of a lot of issues with Donald Trump and you know has always been uh, in it, you know with loggerheads with Russia and US also. So Iran's country controls which of the following states. So state of Hormuz is straight away answer because state of Malacca is in Southeast Asia. Uh, state of Tehran, not very sure exactly where it is right now, but uh, State of Malacca is definitely not the answer. So State of Hormuz is very famous because most of the oil and petroleum in India actually come from that part. So State of Hormuz is actually that area from which Iran basically export karta hai, 
oil, oil and gas to India. So it's one of the global major choke points. So state of hormones is the answer. Now uh, TB uh, is, uh, is caused by bacteria virus. So this is a very classic question now about uh, TB because uh, UPSC also wants the aspirants to know uh, and not only aspirants because they also want to know and judge on the basis of that how well are you aware about the diseases and happening around your country. So suppose what happens you know in generally uh, we take medicines for some disease that is actually a viral disease. So you cannot have medicine for a viral disease because viral diseases cannot be cured by medicine. So you need to be aware of these things. You know? And these are like sitter questions. You cannot afford to get them wrong. So these questions are so easy hote that you have to definitely you know, need to clear the prelims. You need to definitely score them. You know, and, you know these are like low hanging fruits. Mm -hmm. So TB is caused by bacteria definitely. So uh, because you have TB medicine, medications available. Mm -hmm. right? So therefore it's a bacterial disease. Okay, so next question is about GST. So much talked about and so much in news. Uh, what constitutional amendment has been introduced for GST? Uh, so I, I remember it was 100th constitutional amendment and before that it was 99th but since it was pending it was not passed. Uh, it got passed probably as uh, 101st constitutional amendment because there were other constitutional amendment bills they were introduced. So uh, yes it's the 101st uh, constitutional amendment because it was earlier 100th constitutional amendment. But until a bill or you know is passed in parliament usko final number nahi diya jata. so that's actually a temporary number that is given. So finally it was passed as 101 constitutional amendment. So I think that is that is the answer. Uh, next again a question from uh, your Dead Sea. Around from that eight, same area of uh, Middle East. Uh, which of the following guys are not among the IPN states? So one particular tip also, uh, like like you have you guys have mentioned about this question as not among IPN states. So similarly UPSC also has this habit of mentioning these keywords like not or correct or incorrect. So a lot of candidates make a mistake so they incorrect so what they basically do is they mark the answer correct so even if uh, they know the answer so they miss out on reading the incorrect because UPS is asking which of them is not correct but we interpret it as correct just because we are nervous or we are in a hurry of solving the question so which of the following are not among the Rapiran states so we have seen the states for the following water bodies of Israel uh, so similar kind of question because Dead Sea is between Jordan and Israel so Israel is also Jordan is uh, Palestine be here because we have uh, the West Bank, West Bank of Palestine towards uh, the Dead Sea. Okay, West Bank is there and yeah. Uh, so Lebanon is above Israel and is facing towards the Mediterranean Sea. It's not bordering the Dead Sea. And uh, similarly, Syria is having the Sea of Galilee and they do not have uh, Dead Sea because Jordan. Or Palestine beach mein Dead Sea hai, and the waters are shared with Israel as well. So I think third and fifth uh, would be the correct answer because they are asking which of them is not a riparian state of Dead Sea. So uh, yeah, I guess D is the answer of this one. So Sultanpur Bird Sanctuary. So Sultanpur is actually a place in UP but this bird sanctuary is located in Haryana. So it's actually a very famous bird sanctuary. So straightforward answer is Haryana. Now Falcon Heavy very much in news because of Elon Musk and uh, so one of the most defining moments probably in the space research this year. So they are building this uh, reusable uh, uh, space launch vehicle using this. But actually Falcon Heavy is a basically reusable space rocket. Uh, so because you, have, you still have an option of none of the above. So probably if given a chance I would have gone with uh, none of the above. But, but since it's a reusable space rocket launchers and it's not a vehicle. Uh, probably I'll leave it for later on. So probably I'll leave it in the second round. Right now I'm a little doubtful about this question because it can be none of the above, it can be either one also. Because it's a reusable launch rocket and not a vehicle. But it's definitely reusable. Because it has landed back you know, after uh, the famous uh, car that you know Tesla Roadster that basically were launched into the space. Uh, so we'll go on to the next question. So just a minute Dipanchu, yeah. you said that you will be skipping this question. So usually what happens with these kind of questions? Would you come back to it or you would just really leave it? Yeah, so basically uh, there's like multiple approaches but one, uh, one approach that I've always 
uh, succeeded in you know getting good scores in prelims is that I always skim through the paper initially like we did uh, in the beginning and then I quickly try and pick some questions that I'm 100% sure about. So like this question about Sultan Bird Bird Century, I'm 100% sure that it's in Haryana. So I have no doubts about it and I'll definitely mark it as correct. So the next question like Falcon Heavy, I have doubt between these two options. So probably I'm not very sure about it, I'm a little dicey, I don't want to take a risk. So I'll leave it and uh, I will skip it and mark a bubble in or whatever you know individual strategy is. Uh, so you can mark an X, so you can mark a bubble, whatever suits you. So I will come back in the second round uh, So to this question if I think that I have not been able to solve the appropriate number of questions that will be required for the cutoff of this paper. So I'm not very sure because it can either be either of these questions, you know, launch vehicle because it's a re definitely a reusable uh, kind of thing but it's, it's it was basically a rocket, it was not a vehicle. Uh, so none of the above can also be an answer. So right now I'm leaving it. So next question is uh, assertion and reasoning. So there was a significant drain of wealth from India in the years uh, when the British were expanding their presence in Asia, that is correct. Uh, but they used the Indian army for their adventures and used heavy taxation to fund uh, military expenditures. So there was a significant drain that is well documented by Dadabai Naroji and uh, R.C. Dutt. So they, were, they wrote the economic critique uh, of British imperialism in India. So they used to drain out a lot of wealth. So A is definitely correct, but then they used the Indian army for their adventures. They use the Indian army for adventure, but that is not the only uh, that is not the only case uh, why there was an economic drain. There there was an economic drain because of a lot of other factors also, uh, and like they impoverished the rural economy. Uh, they used to force farmers to go crash crops. Uh, they used to have very heavy taxation of Indian produce, and basically, jitne bhi imported goods hote the, unko bilkul tax free rakhte. So that was the economic drain, and not just because of military. So reason is not correct. The assertion is definitely correct because there was a dip drain, so that is why these so many eminent people wrote so many things about it. But they used Indian Army for their adventures. But ye ye statement sahi hai, but this is not the correct uh, uh, reason for this assertion. So uh, uh, the correct answer would be that uh, both A are in true, but R is not the correct explanation of A. So I'll go probably with this option. So uh, next is which of the following uh, nation or parts of the nation where the target of the British expansion is policy in 19th century. So Afghanistan, Burma uh, were there, uh, even your uh, Tibet was there, but Tibet was basically later on. Uh, so not sure very, not very sure about of Tibet right now, because it was the case with Sikkim and the Ahom dynasty and Ahoms basically controlled the Assam and Sikkim which was taken away by the British. Uh, in a war, uh, so Afghanistan was definitely there because Shuja Durrani was there from which they actually took over the Kohinoor diamond uh, because Kohinoor diamond was handed over uh, to him, uh, then basically Rajit Singh you know, took him over and then finally the Leap Singh from Punjab handed it over to Britishers in the war. Uh, Burma was definitely a conquest place, so I'm not very sure of Tibet uh, right now, but uh, they definitely did conquer it in the later part, but uh, Let's see. So, um, a little dicey about it. Probably I'll, I'll attempt it later on. Uh, so, then next is uh, recently due to unfortunate developments, uh, some political parties are contemplating to bring a motion to impeach the current Chief Justice of India. So, that is regarding the Deepak Mishra case. Uh, consider the following statement with reference to impeachment process of CGI. So, proposal of impeaching the CGI must be signed by at least 50 members of Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha, Lok Sabha. So, that is a fairly straightforward question from your Indian polity. No, no double thinking about it. Uh, then the proposal must be originating in the Lok Sabha. Now this is a tricky question uh, because uh, impeachment process is the Supreme Court ke judges ke liye zaruri nahi hota ki wo sirf Lok Sabha member it can either be uh, you know originating from the Raj Sabha also and also from the Lok Sabha bhi ho sakta hai. So this is definitely wrong. So if I even if I'm not sure about the third option, I can actually uh, eliminate B over here and I can eliminate C over here because second is definitely wrong. So now I have a very high probability of scoring the answer because uh, either it can be only one or either it can be only one and three. So Speaker of the Lok Sabha has the liberty of either accepting or rejecting any such motion of the impeachment of CGI. So this is correct answer because the Speaker has the final authority whether to accept a motion or not. So D is the correct answer. So just because of uh, one option that I definitely knew was incorrect, I was actually able to you know increase my probability of scoring and getting that answer correct. So it, it's like almost a 50% probability now. I, earlier it was like seven, uh, no, it was less than that. It was only thirty-three percent probability, probably around that. So next is uh, 
about separate state flags. So this is news because of the Karnataka state flag issue. Uh, so it recently became a uh, subject of national debate. Can the following statement with reference to it? So insofar no Indian states have separate flag. No, definitely Jammu and Kashmir has a flag of its own. Uh, so that's the first state of India that actually has its own separate flag apart from the national flag that we have. Or uh, Constitution of India expresses forbids states from having a separate flag if it fails to secure the concerned opinion. Nay, uh, the Constitution of India has no mention about any particular thing ki koi separate flag nahi ho sakta in a particular state. They can have, there's no mention about it particularly. Flag Code of India, jo ek law in act kiya gaya tha, usme mention hai that uh, the, there's no barring the states to have a separate flag, but they should not be flown from the same mast as the national flag. And uh, agar saath bhi rakhe hai, so the national flag has to be given importance. Uh, so national flag has to be flown above the state flag. Uh, so this is definitely incorrect. So this option is also incorrect. So D, 15D, none of the above is the correct answer for this one. Okay, uh, with reference to uh, Asian Development Bank, the non-Asian Pacific region members of only developed uh, countries. Uh, it aims to reduce poverty across the global through inclusive environmental sustainable growth and regional integration. This is correct because this is generally the objective of the banks to reduce the poverty across uh, through a lot of in, you know inclusive environmentally sustainable growth models uh, it provides finance to sovereign countries only uh, okay uh, to sovereign countries only uh, the non asian pacific region members are only developed countries non asia pacific region members are only developed now which was uh, choose the correct incorrect statement so again we have to choose incorrect so i think first one is incorrect the non asia pacific region members are only developed countries uh, so apart from that you also have developed countries which are not a part of asia, asia pacific uh, it aims to reduce poverty is correct so second cannot be incorrect so b is correct uh, b can be eliminated d can be eliminated so i'm left with a and c it provides finance to sovereign countries only so whenever we have a question in upsc where you find an option jahape, you have an extreme option like only this so there's always a red flag because UPSC has this habit because our brain works like this that whenever we see an extreme option we tend to think that this is correct but actually UPSC thinks otherwise. So in 90% of the cases uh, generally UPSC will make this option just to include it so that people will attempt and they will fall in this trap. So generally you have to be very careful when you are attempting these kind of questions where it mentions only this an extreme option are there. So, uh, so this is incorrect also so C is the correct answer for this one. So because first one is also incorrect and C's uh, third one is also incorrect. So C is the correct answer. Then Sierra ODC has, uh, I have never come across this one, but a uh, building has been recently recognized as world's second highest striking green building. Okay, so which of the following are among the essential features of a green building? So reduce overall adverse impact on human health and natural environment. So green building ka ultimate focus is that, that you reduce your energy consumption and you help the environment. So first one is correct. And effective use of available natural resources, that is also correct. Uh, then uh, economic due to low input cost. Actually the input cost is not low nahi hoti hai initially when you're you know, trying to build a green building and uh, more aesthetic look as compared to normal building. Not always, you know, you generally are not building a green building just to get that aesthetic pleasure out of it. So it might be a case, it might be a possibility, ho bhi sakta hai, nahi bhi ho sakta. So not very sure of the fourth option. So de definitely D is not the correct answer. Uh, first and second are correct. So there are two options actually I'm stuck with this one and two and one, two and three. But then economic due to do low input cost. So low input cost initially is not uh, a thing with green buildings. Initially it, it's a little costly affair. So I think 17A, one and two only is the correct answer. Then Sharjah Act is designated World's Book Capital, consider the following statements. Uh, designation of World's Book Capital is conferred upon any city by World Bank. So I'm totally blank of this question. I do not know. <laughs> I well, know. that's good because, to see because, that uh, there are questions you are blank I, about. I, I, I read it somewhere, but I definitely cannot recall. Probably I should have revised more if I would have <laughs> known that, you know, I'm going to be tested in the surprise test of sorts. But that's the surprise all about. Yeah, I mean, I, I read it, but I'm definitely not sure of this question. Mm -hmm. And uh, I only know that there was one city in India that was conferred the title of World's Book Capital. But I'm not very sure that if it is done, done by World Bank. So I'm going to skip this question. I 
definitely not going to mark it just because I will you know attract a negative marking out of this question. Mm -hmm. So next is Nalsa. So consider the following statements with reference to National Legal Service Authority. It is a statutory body as per the authority because it has been uh, enacted, uh, constituted by a national law. So therefore it is definitely a statutory body. Uh, its purpose is to provide legal services to the poor. Uh, and also without any fee to eligible candidates. So that is also the case. That is basically the objective of NALSA. And the Chief Justice of India is the Executive Chairman of NALSA. That is also correct. So he's the he's the authority, uh, Executive Chairman of NALSA. So this is basically from an Indian quality and also from the part of governance and a lot of current affairs part is linked in this question. Uh, so generally, NALSA is very much in news. In fact, I'm able to solve this question because uh, I remember uh, I went to watch a movie recently and uh, uh, in that movie, during the trailers, they mentioned something about NALSA. So it was like, ki, uh, ko apna haak jana chahiye, that even if you cannot afford a, a, an advocate, uh, the NALSA will provide a free legal aid to the poor. So I read this, I, you know, I, I probably read about this question in that movie theater. So you know, probably that movie helped me solve this <laughs> question. So D all of the above is I guess correct for this so one. So I guess you need to always be alert. Yeah, right? you need to be aware with a lot of things because I remember once, you know, I was traveling uh, because I love to travel. That is one of my hobby. And uh, there were two, three times there were questions from art and culture because art and culture is also a very important area for UPSC exams. So there were a lot of questions that were asked in art and culture and I was able to solve them just because I had traveled to that place. But that will not be the case for every other aspect, mm -hmm. you know. But they, they, these things, you know, definitely help if, you know, how well you are aware of your surroundings and mm -hmm. whichever place you visit. So how well do you know about it? Perfect. So the next one is that the Election Commission of India has joined hands with which of the following entities to launch nationwide voter registration reminder. So it's with Facebook, even though Facebook is in news for all the bad things right now, <laughs> like the Cambridge Analytica issue and the data leak, but then uh, Election Commission of India has tied with them. So this was in news recently. So that's a fairly straightforward question from current affairs. Uh, then which of the following states uh, said to become the first to have a dedicated blood bank for cattle? Blood bank for cattle. I read some, you see, uh, cattles ko leke baut sare, like national dairy, uh, something, something is there in Karnal in Haryana. And then there's something situated related uh, related to cattle in uh, Haryana. But as far as I am concerned, this is not in Haryana. Uh, this is definitely not in Punjab also. This is, uh, I think it's Odisha. Uh, which of the following states said to become the first to have a dedicated blood bank for cattle. Blood bank for cattle, blood bank for cattle. I read it somewhere, I am not very sure. Uh, but my hunch says that, sometimes you have to go with the hunch because I, I, I somehow, I am getting this inner voice that it's Odisha, it's Odisha, Odisha. Because Haryana is the most probable and correct answer, but I am pretty sure that Haryana is not the option. Either it's UP or Odisha, but my hunch is saying it's Odisha, so I'll probably go with Odisha. But let's see, I mean, it, it can be correct also, it can be wrong. So probably I've solved like a lot of questions now, so probably I, it's time for me to you know fill the bubble because it's already like we have almost crossed so much of time and you know, so so I don't want to you know ruin things that have already scored pretty well uh, in you know the questions that I've got. Uh, the answer correctly so i'll try and uh, you know bubble things up uh, so at least the ones that i have actually you know got the correct one so first is definitely a so sometimes you know you, you don't have to be like very uh, careful like you know ki sort of bubble kar diya, pura, you know circle karna zaruri nahi hai. they just need to identify a black spot on on that particular bubble so even if it's like a little white portion there, that's you know that that's fine. You don't have to fret about it. So eighth is D, ninth right entered, yes, ninth right entered D. Tenth is B. Eleventh uh, I left, so I'm probably leaving it because I'm not sure between A and D. Twelfth uh, possibly B. Thirteenth. Three months I left. 14th D. 15th is also D. Sixteenth was about the Asian Development Bank. Um, I still have doubts about this question. Though this sometimes also happens. So when you're like bubbling the question. Uh, even if you like solve the question, sometimes it will happen that you will, you know, again rethink about it. So that is where you have to control, uh, you know, 
uh, your thoughts because sometimes it will happen that you have already got the answer but you get these second thoughts mm -hmm. because you're now bubbling you're kind of like finalizing the answer now so you don't want to take a risk so i'm getting those kind of second thoughts for this question probably so um i don't know probably uh, the non nation pacific region members are only uh, the developed countries uh, and uh, incorrect plans to sovereign countries only probably i think the answer of this is b somehow uh, because it's asking about incorrect one so i think i think i think i will go with b rather than c in this one because uh, this question is asking about incorrect statement and uh, non asia pacific region countries members are only developed countries uh, mostly to nahi hai aisa to incorrect to definitely hai ye and it aims to reduce poverty across global through oh yes because we have to got the get the incorrect one so you know this is a mistake i committed you know i knew this the second part is correct but they are asking about incorrect so i actually marked the other question wrong so it should be actually been one and two but since second is already correct but the question is demanding that we find the incorrect one so the answer of this is not not be c it will actually be b so that is the thing that you have to check again and again you know sometimes that you have to read the question which you are doubtful so probably you can mark a star that you know once you are bubbling the omr probably or once you are going through the second reading that that questions need a revision mm -hmm. so probably i think now this question is correct uh, because the second was definitely the aim of the asian development bank so uh, b is the uh, correct answer for this one probably so i, I will probably go with b in this one But tell me something. How would someone, uh, you know, manage their time uh, when they're doing this? Because if you're rethinking questions, there are still a lot that are left. Yeah, later but on then the uh, you know this can be done probably in the last, uh, in the last part also, or you know uh, there there is there is a chance that you are very sure about a particular question, and you think you know because you when you go through the statement because actually. I could have got the answer correct in the first instance itself, but probably I did not pay the attention to the incorrect word. So that is the loophole that I have to avoid, and the the learners actually have to avoid. Uh, the next is about Sierra ODC. So green building one is seventeenth A is there. Eighteenth, uh, I'm not sure. So eighteenth, I'm not attempting. Nineteenth uh, again. Uh, uh, while you know, uh, while marking also, I was thinking about this statement also. Uh, that about the third statement that the Chief Justice of India is the Uh, executive chairman of nalsa but uh, in the same ad i saw actually it's not the chief justice of india who is the chairman of nalsa he is actually the person who heads the nalsa is your the nalsa university person who is the chairman so chief justice is not the uh, uh, is not the correct person uh, who is who is who is the executive chairman of this nalsa so probably it's a 1 and 2 and not 3 in this case also so uh, going with a and 2 in this Uh, in this question, 18th, I'm leaving. 20th is definitely Facebook. Uh, 21th is I'm going by my hunch of uh, reading the current affairs of you know uh, D part that is Odisha. So we have so far, so far, so far we have like attempted around 20 questions. We have skipped two questions. So 18th we have bubbled now. So we'll proceed ahead uh, with the next set of questions. Sorry, not a mass body. Your body is not a mass body. Your body is not a mass body. Functioning, but actually it's not a mass body. Ministry of Agriculture, no, he has. So definitely, it's D, none of the above. Uh, then uh, the scene is pretty crap. So this was in news. Uh, Be recently, it was in news. Uh, was definitely a Saturn probe uh, with the collaboration of European Space Agency and Roscosmos, uh, that is the Russian one, and of NASA as well. And the plan was basically intentionally uh, to plunge the scene into Saturn. Uh, yes, it was intentional from whatever I read in the paper. Yes, C um, is the one. City level building index. Uh, I read something about even habitat, but uh, city level building is about Ministry of Urban Development. Mm. This is B. Uh, Kanyashri Prakalp is uh, awarded by UN. Uh, reaching the poorest and most vulnerable and inclusive services. Uh, it definitely it was in news because of Namta Banerjee related to some issue about West Bengal. Kanya Shri Prakalp, uh, Kanya Shri Prakalp, Kanya Shri Prakalp, West Bengal, because of another one of the issues there. Okay. Uh, next is about uh, 30 meter telescope, so very important question from science and tech uh, part. So this is located in Ladakh, uh, region of India, primarily due to relatively clean sky for a larger duration, because that is why you need 
telescopes to be cloud in area of cloud free region and you need clear sky and uh, projections collaboration with the effort of india australia us japan and canada i don't think so australia is a part of it uh, us and japan definitely are canada probably but australia is definitely not a part of it uh, never heard nahi suna bilkul bhi australia ke bare mein so uh, a only is the correct answer of this one Uh, why the soil of tens forest cover lesser humus content as compared to grassland uh, because they have a lot of litter in us uh, flat surface nahi options ka uh, wind has blown the forest litter away nahi so uh, the most problem is because the litter is acidic and more resistant to degradation like mic- micron because definitely the forest soils are more acidic especially if you go to the higher regions uh, also so b is the correct answer for this one trade winds are caused by the intense heating and uh, of the land and therefore the winds rise because of low pressure it's not because of the revolution of the earth it's not because of the rotation of the earth uh, in flowing movement it's it's actually the westerlies and subtropical high pressure belt it's not the trade winds so d none of the above is the one for this one mulching a uh, big piece of soil are broken down may the field is irrigated at regular intervals transplanting to hayni uh, loose materials dung are laid on the ground to prevent excessive evaporation or erosion of the soil so actually this adds much also uh, prevents uh, excessive evaporation and also adds organic content to the soil so d is d is correct d is correct is this one tropical deciduous shed their trees reshed their leaves in summer uh, because there is excessive heat uh, so they get dried up also but days are longer nahi they prevent but this they actually do to prevent excessive loss of water uh, so a and c are a little dicey option this but then to prevent excessive loss of water you can also have uh not only leaves being shed but you can also have thorns that's basically an adaptation of a plant uh to prevent excessive loss of water through evapotranspiration you can have a waxy surface uh leaves get dried up leaves get dried up that is a is definitely correct but uh, c prevent for c ko karne ke liye a karta hai so i have to choose between a and c so i'll go with a because there are other methods also to prevent excessive loss of water through have to transpiration it's not only this way uh, okay so next is uh, proportion of different salts remain almost constant across all oceans that is almost final it deeper will not change the water will froze until the height of 5 months no actually they do not get frozen that is why the organism living in the seabed of the oceans can survive even in the freezing waters Uh, because of the anomalous expansion of water at 4 degrees centigrade uh, so d is incorrect in this so b is incorrect a is the correct answer then coral reefs are fragile ecosystem partly because they are very sensitive so that is what that's the main aspect or uh, coral reef ecosystem consists of distinct zone that represent different kind of habitats usually three for a free fresh and back reef never read about it not sure not sure of this one leaving this one even though i know one but never read about these four reef and three zones of reef so leaving this one anyway uh relief rainfall is caused by the convection of currents and relief rainfall is caused by not by convection currents by mountain ranges so that is basically due to orographic rainfall so this is incorrect uh, convection rainfall occurs due to convergence of different air masses that is one convectional rainfall convection is due to intense heating of the land surfaces and then the air is rising and that that get cooled up uh, at the top level of the atmosphere and that results in your precipitation so both of them are incorrect the intensive substances farming so generally in areas like india where you have a high density of population but low level of technology you have intensive substances agriculture especially in southeast asian countries also is this the case in china china is actually advanced technology Bangladesh and India actually have intensive substances farming, so high density population and low technology. Because any other option does not fit. Definitely, high density population and low level of technology is there. So the Chota Napu Plateau, uh, Ranchi is actually on Ranchi Plateau. Uh, Asansol and Durgapur are west near by West Bengal, and Bilai is much near, much lower down. uh and ranchi plateau is basically a part of chota nagpur plateau so because these two are not there 
much to the east of that area and probably which of the following rounds took in and Chota Nagpur practice so Ranchi is because under Ranchi practice is a part of it then which of the following was the type of budget we follow so we followed zero pace budgeting uh, we also had outcome budgeting we also had output budgeting development budgeting I have never heard of program budgeting also I have never come across uh, specifically in the case of India uh, we had gender based, based budgeting definitely uh, in some areas but not these development budgeting and program budgeting so never came across in any of my textbooks that I have read specifically uh, so one and two B uh, and following statements about the financial management government India so maintenance of the existing asset comes under plan expenditure uh, and uh, as the planning commission formulates the five year plans it has a responsibility for the fiscal consolidation so maintenance is not a plan expenditure it's actually non-plan expenditure and the planning commission formulates the five year plan which has the responsibility for fiscal it does not have the responsibility for this one so please run nothing related to this one uh, then which of the following forms part of the non-tax revenue receipts of the government of India so uh, interest jo bhi aata hai, that is a non-tax receipt uh, even your undertakings uh, public undertakings earnings are a part of non-tax receipt uh, non-tax revenue receipts they are not a part of capital capital receipts uh, even grants given by a foreign state yes given grants given by a foreign state are the part of it so deed all of the above then which of the following forms part of the revenue expenditure of the government of India so this was received this is expenditure uh, expenditure on social security is basically out of your uh, because it's not an asset building thing uh, it's even though it's building human capital but still uh, it's an expenditure on uh, people through social security is a part of revenue expenditure uh, grants given to foreign countries and Indian states um, yes and subsidies forwarded to all the sectors of the economy uh, generally are a part of your revenue expenditures okay, so now we come to question number 70 so recently National Board of Wildlife was reconstituted following the recommendation of expert committee this was a news and uh, National Board of Wildlife is a statutory organization definitely considered under the Wildlife Protection Act that is correct and uh, but this is not headed by Union Environment Minister uh, it is not headed by Union Environment Minister he is definitely not the chairman so A is the correct answer for this one uh, then because this was very much in news because of the issue of Jali Kattu and uh, Kambala uh, in uh, your uh, Karnataka so this was a very hot topic uh, so that was why this National Board of Wildlife was in news so anyway uh, next is uh, about uh, India ranks 24 out of 7 countries in the Environment Democracy and Democracy Index. Uh, Environment Democracy was launched by World Bank. Uh, not very sure about it. And then because I haven't read uh, particularly about this one. So uh, then EDI Varad's uh, progress of countries enacting laws in order to... Uh, this is correct but I'm not sure if it was by World Bank. Uh, because I have not come across World Bank having released this index probably it was by world economic forum or by it's why i guess it was by some organization but not world bank but i'll take not take a risk i'll just leave it this leave this question so can you tell me like which section might have this question been formed from so this was basically uh, the section uh, which is also one of the like hot areas of upsc examination now so these questions are related to reports and organizations so these days upsc has been asking a lot of questions on a different type of reports and which organization releases them so specifically you know uh, like especially environmental reports are very very important mm -hmm. so that is why you know it's sometimes it's very difficult because this is all like marking up it's like pure factual question like you have to remember the name of the report and the rem name remember the name of the organization mm -hmm. so that is why i'm like kind of stuck in this question because i do not remember if it was launched by world bank because i am sure that's not by world bank I, but i cannot recall of the organization which basically releases this i think it's world economic forum but i'm not pretty sure so i will not take a risk in this question uh, so I'm just kind of just leaving it. Uh, so next is about Namami Gange. So Namami Gange is also one of the flagship programs for the government of India. So this is basically meant by Central Pollution Control Board and State Pollution Control Board. Uh, and it's 100% funded by the Union Government. So this is definitely funded by the uh, Union Government. Uh, but it's not only the uh, Central Pollution Control Board and uh, the State Pollution Control Board. So B is the question because first is incorrect for this one. Uh, definitely. And uh, India is home to... 48 known of the species of bumblebees which of the following is not correct about Indian bumblebees uh, in play an important role in ecosystem and crucial for so this any, any type of bees or any 
particular organism uh, like you know even butterflies are play a very important role in the whole ecosystem so even bumblebees have a very important role so this option definitely cannot be incorrect because we have to find the incorrect answer and uh, they are generally found in altitudes uh, of 20 to 50 uh, 2000 to 15000 feet along the entire himalayas from jammu kashmir and nagaland so that that's their main habitat area also of bumblebees uh, generally they are found in this uh, latitude and also uh, they are found in Western Ghats also. So anyway, the option is saying that entire Himalayas from Jammu Kashmir to Nagaland also they are found. Uh, so I think both of the options are actually correct for this one. Uh, none of them are actually incorrect. So I'll go with C1. So C is the correct answer for this one. Then Irena was in news recently. Uh, sister organization, uh, which is true, uh, of UN to promote uh, uh, renewable in, uh, United Nations to promote adaption and sustainable use of renewable energy. India is one of the 33 permanent members. So this was the news and I definitely read that India is the 33rd member and there can be only one option which can be correct. Uh, it's headquartered in not in Washington DC, probably it's headquartered in France, some I guess in Paris. And, but there can be only one option correct out of it, so it's only definitely B because India is 33rd member, that's I'm pretty, pretty much sure about it. Pakka India 33rd member hai because I have hai. Next is uh, on the green piece, uh, which is a nice kind of following the statements about an icebreaker in the Arctic. And green piece is basically a, an organization working in the field of uh, environmental issues. So they are, they are not an icebreaker. Icebreaker was of Russia. I guess its name was Sabir, if I'm very, if, if I'm, if I'm sure uh, that the largest icebreaker was by Russia by the name of Sabir. It's not Greenpeace, and uh, Sunrise is an NGO working for the environment. So actually, it's uh, Greenpeace is actually the NGO working for environment democracy. Probably Sunrise is the name of an icebreaker in the Arctic, but Sabir is the biggest one uh, that has been made by Russia till now. So none of them are actually uh, correct for this option. Uh, next is related to geography, so any volcanic eruption, the hot liquid mountain uh, rock that are called as lava inside the earth, but on eruption they are called as magma. So actually it's opposite. Magma is when they are inside the earth and when they come out on the top, when they come to the surface of the earth, they are called as lava. So this one is incorrect. Uh, then malphic rocks are rich uh, in iron, but not in magnesium, so actually it's opposite. And granite is an example of extrusive rock. Actually it's an intrusive rock because it's found inside the surface of the earth and basalt is basically an extrusive rock which is found on the uh, uh, surface of the earth. So even this one is incorrect. So D, none of the above is the answer for this one. Then local winds, phone is a warm uh, dry wind. Harmatan basically blows from your Sahara to your Western Africa. Uh, so that is also correct. And Santa Ana is from Western News and California. Santa Ana, I'm not sure. I've read about Chinu, but I'm not sure about Santa Ana. Uh, I'm sure about one and two, but not sure about this one. Uh, Western USA, California, but there's a place where they blow and that is the name that has been given to. But going on by my hunch, I think it's correct uh, because this area is in the Western part of USA. And even the option says that it's in California. And these areas are generally having these winds, local winds blowing, especially the dry areas of California, because they were recently facing a drought-like conditions. Uh, so I think it's D, uh, probably from what I have read and what I can actually connect the dots with. So I think it's D, uh, but I never, I'm not sure I'm taking a risk in this question. Uh, but anyway, let's see. So the next is about coal production in India. So major portion of the produce products coal is India is of lignite type. Now we have only few ones that are basically lignite type, that is naval lignite in Tamil Nadu. Uh, Butyrimnus type of coal contains highest carbon content. It's actually anthracite that has the largest, uh, highest contents like 95% of best quality of coal is in anthracite. So it's like peat, lignite, butyrimnus and anthracite. So India may most maximum you can find is butyrimnus. Lignite is not the major one that is found. So I guess both of the options are uh, incorrect of this one. And uh, similarly, butyrimnus is mainly a coking category coal. No, butyrimnus is not a coking category coal because India lacks coking quality of coal, and that is why we have to import a lot of coal from Australia uh, because we cannot use it in steel production. So therefore, if India would have been self-sufficient, we would not have been importing that coal, and India does not have that quality of coal because we have high sulfur content, we have high ash content as well. Uh, 
so it is required for steel industry but india definitely imports a lot of it from outside so it is not uh, a, a it's definitely not this option so all of them are incorrect uh, then with mountain ranges india consider the following statements uh, Arabli ranges are the one of the oldest fold mountains. That is definitely correct because now their size have reduced, but they are actually older than the Himalayas. And uh, Tapi River originates in the Mekal Range and drains through the Rift Valley of Vindhyan Range, bisecting Satpura Ranges. So it's like Vindhyan Ranges over here, and then Satpura Ranges over here, and between this flows the Namada Valley uh, in a Rift Valley, and then Tapi River flows in this direction. So it's actually not between Vindhyan and Satpura, even though it originates around this area. Uh, but it drains below Satpura and not between Vindhya and Satpura. So this is incorrect. Then Mekal Range is actually an extension of Satpura Range. That is correct because Mekal Range is towards the east of Satpura Ranges. Uh, actually to the, towards the southeast part. Uh, so uh, third is correct and one is also correct. So B is the correct answer for this one. The best way to improve crop production in India is to increase the crop intensity. So you actually produce more in the gross, gross on area. So what, which of them is not the hindering factor? We have infertile soil because we have a lot of area where we do not have best quality of soil available. So, so that is correct option. But then deficiency is moisture is there because most of the monsoon in India is rain fed. And we have to depend a lot on irrigation. Ki pe depend karna padta hai. Especially, uh, you know, jo peninsula India, we need a lot of tank irrigation. We have to depend on monsoons. And insufficient uses of manures and fertilizers. So because of excessive use of fertilizers and manures, we're actually degrading the quality of soil in India. Uh, then large stacks of black soil. So black soil is actually one of the most suitable uh, uh, soils, which is best suit suited for growing any type of crop. Crop, especially your cotton, is grown well on these black soils, and they're also referred to as regur soils. So this can definitely not be a hindering factor. It's actually a benef you know benefiting factor. So this is uh, not a definite, uh, definitely not a hindering factor. So I guess we have solved pretty much all of the paper. Now we have to like bubble, bubble it up because we still have uh, you know 15 minutes left. So like last bit of questions that we have to bubble up. And well, then that's we, good because you've all uh, you know you've kept bubbling the entire way. So yeah. No, so like last bit a few a bit you know the ones that I solved in the last that I have to just bubble it up. Finally, it's 80 and I'm, I guess I'm done, uh, so well within time. Good, you actually have a few minutes left, that's uh, really good. I don't know, I mean it was like heavily loaded questions and some of, it, some mm -hmm. of them were like easy but then a lot of them required a lot of brainstorming. Mm -hmm. uh, but all in all, it was a good good, uh, good experience, you know, really great experience in fact. I mean, it's a really nice question but you could have actually told me before the test and I could have prepared really well. I'm now really nervous about this course. <laughs> Uh, but let's see, you know, keeping my fingers crossed. So, you know, Perfect. here finally it is. Right. So we will quickly get this evaluated by our team. Okay. And uh, fingers crossed, let's see how well you did or not in this exam. Perfect, Dipanshu. So now we have the scores finally in from your surprise test. Right. Any guesses? How did you do? Uh, well, there were 80 questions and I attempted around like 72. I skipped on 8. I am thinking that somewhere around... Uh, I got around like eight to nine questions wrong. That I that's what I think. So probably if I you know calculate negative marking 0.66, uh, uh, somewhere between 110 plus minus three or four, you know. So maybe around 110 plus minus three. So that's I don't know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, it. to be very honest, it's really very close. Uh, okay. You did a really give a very good attempt, and you actually scored a 114. Really? <laughs> that is really good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, thank you so much. Uh, yes. I thought I did decently well, not good enough, but the you know, one four is pretty good considering the number of uh, questions were eighty and the, you know around skipped around like eight questions. So tic tac scores. I mean, I guess you know, that will help in clearing the cutoff <laughs> at least. So I hope like this was really informative uh, for your learners, especially you know how to approach. Uh, you know your questions and what exactly is the mindset during the examination was i'm like really mentally tired right now i'm really tired you know you can actually notice it in my eyes True. like i'm really tired right now but thank you so much it was a really wonderful experience so the panchu that was a really good session and thank you for joining us at an academy and we really hope to see you soon again thank you so much you know always a pleasure thank great you. thank you